it's wonderful for you to be here. As thank you so much for being here. I know this has been such a crazy week with you moving house and a wonderful new book from, from Louise as well. I'm sorry she couldn't be here, but I think she's very, very busy. She is traveling around doing readings just now and I'm unpacking boxes frantically. That's very noble. It's a very noble, noble chore. I shall expect a very good present. <laughs> Thank you so much for again for another year of judging the uh, the flash fiction competition. I have to say we had hundreds of entries. It was a really hard job for our our readers to get it down. I know we're only supposed to send you twenty stories. I'm afraid there were so many arguments. We ended up with twenty eight. We couldn't get we couldn't get them. And I think that it was quite tough for you and you and Louise as well. It was extremely tough this year and it was such a pleasure to read them. I, I think your first readers did an excellent job because everything you sent, we were happy to read. There was absolutely no padding. And you know that I'd emailed you in a bit of a panic to say that our first shortlist was 18 stories, which is perhaps a bit of a long shortlist, um, but it was really, really difficult this year to make a decision and I understand it was such a hard job even getting that shortlist even smaller we've come up with a whole new category of prize we're actually going to have commendations <laughs> thank you for indulging us and allowing us some commendations um, as I say it was just it was just too difficult to choose and there were some of the stories that we we wanted to celebrate a little bit let's begin with talking about how to draw a frog by Bruce Mayer. Bruce is a pretty prolif prolific writer. He is he lives in Barrie, Ontario. Um, can you tell us what you thought about his story? How to Draw a Frog was just absolutely charming in the best sense of the word. Um, it totally charmed me when I read it. And I know that Louise felt the same. And the way that it builds through these different iterations, which are actually quite serious, you know, and did make me think about how people used to draw from specimens that sadly weren't always weren't always alive or were sometimes being dissected. And the thing that I liked best of all about it is the the ending of the story and that just wonderful, unusual idea about this perfect communion between artist and frog. Yeah. And I just thought it was delightful. It was an absolutely delightful, quirky little gem of a story. <laughs> yeah, like the, the idea that the best thing is to have raised the frog from tadpole so that there's a relationship. And it says what he says. So frog and artist can trust each other in a lasting bond where a happy artist draws and a skill frog poses. I am just delighted to say that how to draw a frog by Bruce Mayer, has won the Editor's Award for Creativity, Humour and Sheer Delight in Flash Fiction Writing. So congratulations, Bruce. Let's move on. We're going to announce the winner of the Golden Hair Award for Scottish Flash Fiction, which goes to the top flash fiction story that's entered by a writer living in Scotland. The Golden Hair Award, it carries a prize of £300 and one year's free membership of the Scottish Arts Club, which is a great place, as you know, for anyone who loves the arts. Zoe, who is this year's winner? The winner is Tinya Saganata. Tinya Saganata's last words, my gardener. Tell us what really struck you about that story. Again, it was a really unusual concept, and I thought the voice was... The voice was super strong right from the beginning. I liked that contemporary thoughtful edge that actually tapeworms might think about the complexities of gender. Um, and again, it had a surprisingly poignant ending. You know, and we think, you know, it's one of these flash fictions that, that makes you think about something seriously as well and how you actually live symbiotically with other, other creatures, other beings. And, Wow, what if they could talk? What would they say? This is what they'd say. And would we miss them? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we'd miss a tapeworm, um, but we might do. <laughs> it was definitely a Scottish tapeworm. Oh, definitely, yeah. No, the, the dialect was really well judged. It, it flowed really well, not, not overdone on the page, just enough to give you a very strong sense of Tina's voice, if we could call her Tina, which we're we could call her allowed to. She tells us we can. I don't think Andrew would they mind. Tell us we can. <laughs> we're, we're quite familiar with Tina. Anyone who hasn't read the story, you better read it quick in order for any of this conversation to make any sense at all. 
um, you can go to the website, the uh, see at the bottom there, you can see the website there, and you can go straight there and you can read uh, Tina Saginata's last words by Andrew Gardner, at least for the next month. But after that, you're going to have to wait till later in the year and you'll have to buy the book. So move fast. Now we come to the international awards for the Edinburgh Award for Flash Fiction. As I said earlier, the judges had such a hard time narrowing down this fantastic field that we have created a whole new category of commendations. So Zoe, let's talk about the five stories that have won <laughs> commendations. Uh, who has won the first commendation? Well, thank you again for allowing us five commendations. You said we could have up to five and well, we took them all because <laughs> the, the, the field was so, so strong this year. I'm delighted to say that the first commendation goes to Edith Resnack for Green Dreams. Such a, an atmospheric story. And I think a story about the power of reading and the way that books can transport us, physically in our minds, they can take us on journeys, they can take us different places, open up our world. And it really captured that pleasure, um, I think for both Louise and I in a very, very atmospheric way as well. Um, so just a, yeah, an excellent piece of work. And of course it, it is set in, in Hungary, it's set in, uh, in Budapest, which is actually where Edith uh, lives. She oh, great. Nice because it's not uh, it's not an absolute twist in the tail at the ending. Yeah. It's just something a little bit more complex, unexpected. It works really, really well. It had quite a, um, 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 a cinematic feeling to it. Mm, to very way. much so. Very much so. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. OK, so the second commendation, who does that go to? The winner of the second commendation is David Francis for the story A Prayer Answered. It had a very, very rich sense of place, again, created very subtly through, I think, fine observation of the nuances of language. And again, as with many of these stories, actually, that we're talking about tonight, um, a very strong core concept and not too neat. A story that opens up the story of a relationship, of a place, um, and of course, of loss and yearning and hope. Um, that the title gives us an indication might just pay off, but the story itself, oh, I'm not sure. I, I didn't see, I didn't see a happy ending ending coming for this one. Um, but it was a really just lovely writing, um, really powerful, powerful idea, powerful emotional draw to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. But I, I, I feel like reading the ending, but I can't because that would sort of give too much away. But I mean, just to give a sort of flavour of this. She looked out at the first drops of rain, the single shirt hanging mournfully on the washing line by the harbour became flecked with it. Big drops, she thought. The shirt had been there for three days and three nights already. And it's waiting. The shirt is waiting. Such a good image to start with. And personally, I loved that short little line, big drops, she thought. There was just something about that observation yeah. that was really convincing for me. And in a way, it's the sort of thing, you know, when people talk about editing their work and stripping out things that are unnecessary, in a way, we don't need to know that they're big drops, but it just really brings us closer to the person yeah. looking at the shirt when we know it, that that's... It really conveys the idea of clinging on, doesn't it? Like, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Definitely. So let's come to the next commendation. A third commendation is for Julie Drawn for The Crinkle and the Crumb. Oh, that is fantastic. Julie lives in Taiwan. She's really not written oh, very much before. So it's wonderful to it's wonderful to see this. So tell us about The Crinkle and the Crumb. It was very, again, very, very convincing. The voice of the story, the fact that it was homing in on, I mean, as the title suggests, very small detail, seemed absolutely believable from the point of view of the character. So in a way, it's a very simple story, but in terms of expressing somebody's experience. Yeah, and you feel mm -hmm. as if you know that character, don't you? you feel yeah, you have yeah. I'm really pleased that that's um, a new writer because I think that that bodes very well for the future. Yeah, so excellent. Congratulations, Julie. And, and the next commendation, the fourth commendation, the fourth commendation goes to Kirsty Hammond for A Lesson on Conditionals. Oh, fantastic. I, I loved this story. I thought the structure was so clever. Um, it was 
funny in a way actually what it's saying isn't you know isn't necessarily funny but the way it's saying it um is so cleverly done I loved that it was about language itself as well and the the way that it switched between two different storylines in a way um but the way they're plotted together is is so cohesive and successful I, I thought it was a really a really clever piece of work and I, I really enjoyed this one you could feel the pain of the character coming through oh, yeah. so in the classroom they're in this sort of formal situation where they're teaching and you can feel the emotional engagement with definitely and yet it, it made me laugh too you know it, I think um I always admire when people manage to to get a, a, a laugh out of something that's a bit yeah. bleak and you feel yeah. Oh, yes the... yeah absolutely and our fifth commendation the last commendation goes to hazel osmond for forked tongue quite a few stories in that we read were thinking about people who are new to scotland new to the uk what kind of response they they meet here and Again, this was, it was really smart. It started by being about language and the pleasure of language and the feel of words in your mouth um, in a really, you know, delightful and enjoyable way. And it changes devastatingly, actually, without wanting to give too much away. It changes devastatingly halfway through and it has an absolutely killer last line, this one. I can't give it away, but it's no, just but isn't it amazing a good last that, line. Isn't, isn't it amazing that that can happen within 250 words? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, last year we were so impressed by what people had done in such a limited word count. This year the, the standard was was higher still, to be honest. It's, it's really, really impressive. Now we come to the prizes. Um, the third prize in the Edinburgh Award for Flash Fiction is a prize of £150 and one year free membership of the Scottish Arts Club. Uh, Zoe, can you tell us who you and Louise have chosen? I can, and with very great pleasure as well. The third prize has been won by Michael Callaghan for Things Visible and Invisible. Um, everything beautifully observed, beautifully convincing, a portrait of a father-daughter relationship um, that was just lovely and then became very, very poignant, but also in a way quite, quite reassuring and hopeful as well. And the thing that the story did, which I, I mentioned before, sometimes, sometimes in flash fiction, people want there to be a twist in the tale to get an effect. And Sometimes people have played about with that in the, the shortlist that, that we've talked about tonight, but in a very sophisticated way. And this does have a surprise at the end, but it's a surprise. It's not a trick in the last line or something. It's something that just unfolds gently in the last quarter or fifth of the story and really gives it such a, a very moving conclusion. It's yeah. a really good piece of work. And the title's a kind of giveaway, you know, what's visible, what's invisible, what's real, what's unreal, um, but so nicely done through dialogue. And actually this year, most stories didn't really employ a huge amount of dialogue and this one did to very good effect. Now we come to the second prize in the Edinburgh Award for Flash Fiction 2022. This carries a cash prize of 300 pounds and of course, one year's membership of the Scottish Arts Club in Edinburgh. The second prize in the Edinburgh Award for Flash Fiction 2022 has been won by Cathy Hoyle for Sea Fret. <gasps> this is really beautiful writing. It's a beautiful piece of work. Um, last year and this year, we had a couple of stories that played about a bit with poetic form, and this one did it incredibly well. It employs repetitions, um, it employs gorgeous, gorgeous, evocative, poetic language, not too, not too fancy. It's quite tough in places too, very, very tough. And it's another incredibly moving story. It, it leaves you with a, yeah, it leaves you with a real lasting sense of loss and how a very small action can turn into a, yeah, I have repercussions that will run through lifetimes. Um, but the language of it is is really just beautiful. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Kathy's a poet as well. It's, it's really gorgeous writing. This is it. 
It's time to announce the winner of the Edinburgh Award for Flash Fiction 2022. This carries a first prize of £1,000, one year free membership of the Scottish Arts Club and of course the Edinburgh Award for Flash Fiction Trophy. Oh, and if you knew just how much discussion it's taken, Louise and I, how much arm wrestling to, to make decisions between such, such excellent stories. But there is one winner and I am delighted to announce that the winner of the Edinburgh Award for Flash Fiction 2022 is Gail Anderson for the letter from the Home Office. It was so surprising. It had such a wonderful metaphor at the centre of it that was sustained so well. And it, it just exemplified what flash fiction can do, that you can do something so intricate in such a few hundred words. Um, you know, this beautiful metaphor, the hot air balloon soaring above the country and then the letter appearing and... Uh, Again, I don't want to give away the ending because it's really nicely done, but that somebody's perceptions might change when what they've hoped for for a long time actually transpires. It may not be as expected or it may not be easy. Um, it's a really just lovely, stylish writing, really flows. It's full of beautiful observational detail, looking down at, at the, the landscape below, descriptive, lovely, but it's really heading towards uh, a point and a really strong point mm -hmm. um, and one that's social and political and in a way just, yeah, in a way belies the beauty of, of some of the writing. I, I thought it was so well put together. This yeah. was, it was a difficult decision, but Louise and I, both really thought this this was a, a worthy winner for the award this year. And again, I think that it it because it, it's it's really dealing with very complex issues and somehow manages to to deal with that. You know, it's not just got a simple there's no simplicity about that ending. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that the the metaphor of the hot air balloon helps that in a way because sometimes we're, you know, we're we're really moved to write about things that we don't have personal experience of necessarily. And this was a great way of approaching it and making it, making it real, um, almost through a flight of fantasy, making something very, very real. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, um, thank you again, thank you so much.